won't change that easily on that side of the house. We don't think that kind of consideration or reconsideration will occur on the side of the house. We say minority can be much and much worse because of lack of money. And of course, money can be damaging. You can't sustain your own churches when, even if it's broken because you have to pay tax or you have to move to secularization of your religions. It is damaging because only strong churches can stay strong, can stay, uh, can maintain its own state. But minority religions or weaker religions, religion institutions can't maintain its own state because they have to pay more and more money. They have to secularize themselves. But by um, basically it's depriving their important rights to pursue their own pure religious belief, especially in the context of globalization that's occurring, people moving on to the other side, which says secular, we don't think that kind of rights deprivation is good. Last case, whether state intervention benefits them or not. We didn't hear any rebuttal from the side of the house. For example, tax evacuation occurs, the government can use them as bargaining chip to force them to change their own religious stance. We think that kind of situation can be much more occurring on the side of the house and protect the right to religion for individuals. We oppose this motion. Thank you. And thank you for this remarks. I would like to call that on the leader of opposition to deliver the reply speech. Please deliver the speech within four minutes here. Yeah. I'm going to summarize this debate from four issues. First issue, whether uh, whether it is it, uh, whether a country, you know, religious institution is paying taxes to the extent they affect other people. The second issue is whether what is the impact on decision, whether this proposal is beneficial to the religious in institution or not. What is the impact? Uh, and thirdly, how this proposal is going to change the nature of religion. And fourthly, why this proposal is dangerous in terms of state intervention. But before that, let me confirm the mutual understanding in this debate. Mr. Speaker, there is a disagreement over the impact of taxes, right, Mr. Speaker? Yes. But Mr. Speaker, to the extent they admitted that this, this proposal is going to change the nature of extreme religion to the more modern, Mr. Speaker, we have to assume, to, like, to some extent, they just, like, this tax has impact, Mr. Speaker. We believe, Mr. Speaker, you know, if these, because, you know, you know religious imposing tax on religious institutions mean that religious institutions doing, you know, having, like, churches in New York have to hire the, have to pay the property tax, right? Other economic institutions, right, Mr. Speaker? That's, that's a principle, right, Mr. Speaker? Because they want to treat, like, other entity and religious entity in the same way. So we have to yeah. assume to some extent that this tax has impact on these religious institutions. First, you know, whether, you know, about the contribution issue. Today's government has been said, to the extent that these religious institutions influence the political process, they have to pay compensation for that, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, to that extent, we, what we have responded is that they have already, you know, religious people have already paid the tax to the extent they have affected the political process, Mr. Speaker, because we are just only trying to equalize the situation, right, Mr. Speaker? Without these religious institutions, from the beginning, these religious people who pay taxes cannot, you know, participate in the politics, right, Mr. Speaker? But what we are saying is that without these religious institutions, the religious issue will not be on the agenda or on the issue or the politics. As a consequence, they are, they are, they are prohibited from participating in the political process. Yeah. And the other people are even right, using this kind of institution are allowed to participate in the politics. So we are just trying to equalize the situation. And we are really that to the extent they affect other right, uh, other people, Mr. Speaker, religious people have already you know, com pay, 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 uh, pay compensation in a form that they pay tax other, other ordinary people. Now, secondly, about the issue of acceptance. Today, the government bench said that this will lead to better acceptance of religion. What, you do not, what we say is that people really do not care when, uh, Mark Mar 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 pointed out that people, like, this will not change in terms of people's perception whether religion pay tax or not. Now, second, more important is this figure, you know, from the beginning, you know, this proposal will, you know, 
prohibit you know, some small institution, right, small minority region from participating in a politics and being yeah, accepted yeah. by society, right, Mr. Speaker, because this will uh, like impose to some extent a burden on that minor region in society, such as you know, Scientology or Muslim, Mr. Speaker. We believe this is a huge damage to these minority region because on the one hand, we have mega church participating in the political process. On the one hand, on the other hand, we minority region cannot participate in the politics. We see that is a huge harm. Thirdly, the harm we have explained is in the nature of regime change. They say, you know, changing the nature of religion from extreme to moderate is a good thing. No, we don't really think that's a good thing, Mr. Speaker. That is not a position, not in a position to judge a particular region yeah. and change the nature of religion. And what they are going to do is to drastically change the nature of religion in a secular, or in a commercialized manner. Because to pay, unlike people, to pay taxes, they will be more incentivized to focus on commercial activity rather than religious activity, such as providing religious ritual or someone, Mr. Speaker. We view this is going to inevitably change the nature of religion yeah. And we believe this is going to be extremely harmful to the religious people who believe in that kind of religious religion, Mr. Speaker. Fourth issue is the danger of this proposal, Mr. Speaker. There are many religions, minority religions, which is hated by society, like Scientology and Muslim, as my speaker pointed out. This proposal will create a room for states to pressure or intervene into these minor religions under the name of tax inspection or under the, under the name of tax inspection, right, Mr. Speaker? This is extremely dangerous because we are allowing, allowing the room for state to intervene into this kind of minority religion, and this is extremely harmful in terms of religious uh, protection of minor religious institutions. For these reasons, we are very proud to oppose. <laughs> I'd like to call upon the Deputy Prime Minister to deliver the uh, final slide. If you can clear the case, please deliver the speech for the information here. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, we think there's a massive difference between sticking and loving your own personal identity versus trying to impose the identity upon others. That is what, me what the meaning of trying to engage in politics means, right? Because when these institutions try to engage in politics, they're trying to create some societal change through a law, through norm, whatever, right? This leads to the oppression and whatever that they try to talk about. Here's the logic. When that is far likely to happen, we think it's far better if we create that additional push or additional factor for these people to actually consider that maybe I shouldn't go too extreme and maybe I should go too, like, a bit more moderate because, you know, that's probably better. So, yeah. And like this thing about like you know minority identity would disappear is kind of ridiculous right? because in any kind of liberal democratic society, your right to religion, the minority rights are pretty much always guaranteed. So we don't necessarily how they're gonna disappear. But in any case, we still argue that the fact that these minority religions would pay a certain amount of tax would validate their view far more than the status quo. Because here's the funny thing about them: they are able to point out why like, they are able to portray that the religious line of logic is kind of marginalized from the public discourse, but they're not necessarily telling why exactly their kind of case would you know, make them look better. We propose some sort of solution that means we might be a little bit better. So let me just tell you how would this policy function in a more timeline manner, right? The first step that this policy is going to function is that it creates, like, it affects the decision-making process when they're trying to engage in the political arena, right? Should I advocate for policy ABC? Should I take ABC stance officially? Etc. Etc. The factor that is included here is not only is it good or bad, but also I need to pay money. Would it be worth it, right? Would people accept it and would I be able to have some kind of importance in society? This means, Mr. Speaker, that these people would have to more, have a more rational calculus. That would it be, like, would the cost be uh, be worth? Uh, no, would the benefit be worth the cost? This means that in a more liberal democratic society, which is probably the way we're debating this about, uh, the stance that these people would be advocating for be a more reconciliatory stance, where people like with a more liberal or secularist the society would be able to accept and tolerate that this is probably something okay that we are willing to engage and debate or even come to some kind of consensus as well. This means, Mr. Speaker, that you know, like oh, and without this. It's far more likely that religious institutions go crazy or go more extreme, right? As we've seen in South Korea, like in uh, like in Philippines, for instance, like how they mobilize people to directly go against RH bill with no room for negotiation whatsoever. This kind of existing stance is what drives people away from religious institutions in the first place, right? They're not really dealing with this issue at all. Second, how would this make social discourse better? Because firstly, the group of radicals would probably be, you know, not accepted either way, right? So that's out. But let's talk about the more moderate group who are willing to pay tax and also try to shift a bit of stance so that we can have some room of debate and have some kind of, perhaps even some kind of compromise, for instance. It means that the whole process of coming to some kind of like 
the societal consensus that is transiting some kind of policy, we have far more deliberation and debate and acceptance between both sides. The outcome will be far better because what, even when liberal wins, these the religious people will feel that they're still part of the process, that they're still being respected as a religious institution. And even when religious institutions win, that amount of money that they con did contribute back would be able to compensate for a minority that may or may not suffer as a result of this. We think this is far better. Lastly, you talk about the how, like the when, when after this other discourse is done, how when policy implementation, why tax is something massively important. Because what's important about this political outcome is that whether like you know this political outcome would harm some people, or would these people who are harmed get some kind of compensation? The source for this kind of compensation is directly precisely the tax money or the revenue of the state, right? In any kind of liberal democratic society. Ultimately, the minority are being protected. What we argue is this. If these institutions are those who are trying to push for some kind of changes that could potentially affect certain group of people in society, we think they bear the responsibility to you know, <coughs> pay some money so that they don't like, they can mitigate that harm at the end of the day. For this reason, we're extremely proud to propose.